it seems to me that, uh, as I'm sure many of you know, our colleagues in uh, mathematics and in complexity science for the last 15, 20 years have been uh, discovering that even the air currents in this room, the currents of invisible air coming out of my nostrils that make these little vortices, or the other uh, movements of air in the room, they say we can never predict just how these movements of air, even if we know exactly the state of the room and the air within the room at one moment, we cannot predict just how it's going to shape itself in the next moment. And so they say it's chaotic, chaotic behavior. Um, they say the same thing about the heart beating in our chest. We cannot precisely predict the next micro moment of the next heartbeat because it's always just a bit out of phase. It's never exactly mechanically precise so that it can respond to a sudden surprise from the outside. It is unpredictable. It is, they say, it follows a chaotic pattern of behavior. It's a strange word, chaotic. But they say the same thing if it's raining and the, the movement of a, of a water droplet down the surface of the window. Uh, we cannot even predict just how that drop is going to fall, whether it will here swerve to the right or to the left. Um, even if we know just how it is falling in the last moment, we cannot know exactly how it's going to fall the next. They say, ah, its behavior is, is chaotic, which is a very strange word to choose. At least in English, the word chaos usually means out of, out of control, completely out of any order whatsoever. But that's not what they mean. They don't mean to say that the heartbeat is completely out of control, but that it is out of our control. That the air currents in the room are not out of control, but they are out of our control. That is to say, a much better word for what they mean is wild. That the heart beating in our chest is wild. The air currents are wild. The, the water droplets or the waves crashing on the beach are wild. Wildness is what we are made of, and we cannot escape it. And even in the middle of the city, even on the 35th floor of some skyscraper, in some office, if you walk over to the refrigerator and open it, and someone left uh, a lunch in there last week, and you open that, what you see, wildness. <laughs> that is to say, um, uh, the earth, nature, wildness, permeates us. It is inside of us and it's all around us. If we would allow it back into our speaking, if we would allow that the city itself is just a relatively domesticated zone of wildness, but is still wild. And then there are these relatively undomesticated zones when we go up into the mountains or into the, the depths of, of an old forest. It's really, really wild there, but it's wild everywhere, even inside our own heads when we lie down to sleep at night, the, the chaos of our, of our dreams. It's not chaos, it's just wild. So, I think that by shifting even just a little bit some of the ways that we speak, we begin to feel the world, to feel the earth around us again. 